Hello, thank you very much for joining this session. Today we will be talking about uh, bug bounty. Uh, this is a frequent word that uh, probably you have heard about. It's a bug bounty, a responsible disclosure, and uh, many companies are really interested in this stuff, but uh, also many researchers and uh, newcomers to the cybersecurity uh, industry are interested on, on this. What, what is this about? Don't worry, I, I will uh, tell you how uh, to start on, on this, how to understand perfectly fine uh, the, the implementation in the company. So let's go. First of all, uh, let me uh, introduce myself. Um, I'm Omar Bemboas. I have been working in the uh, cybersecurity industry for uh, at least 15 years, I don't remember correctly. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, I have been in a um, few of the most important companies around the, the, the world such as uh, EY, Nokia, Microsoft, or uh, IKEA, where I'm currently uh, holding position as a senior security engineer. I'm the responsible of running the responsible discussion program and uh, bug bounty program. Uh, I would like you to understand this uh, tweet I posted some time ago. So we cannot uh, just rely on, on the software or the things that we are building uh, because it was uh, secure uh, when uh, we run a SAST or DAST uh, scanner. So things uh, in security change pretty fast and we need to, to be aware of that. Okay, uh, so the agenda. Uh, I will talk a little bit about cyber threats. So what is the, the, the current... Uh, issues that uh, usually companies are facing, uh, the difference between back bounty and responsible disclosure, um, how you can start your own back bounty program, uh, and how uh, we have been doing in, in IKEA. Uh, I will talk briefly uh, about that, uh, but later on you can, you can ask questions in, uh, in the chat. So, uh, cybersecurity challenges that we have been seeing is that uh, the cyber crime does not stop. They are uh, always on the rise. They, they want to make as much profit as possible. And they are targeting a lot of companies in the last years. Uh, with this COVID situation, we have seen many data breaches where, uh, well, uh, attackers or cyber uh, I don't like to to talk to to mention uh, or to to talk about the, these attackers as hackers because uh, hackers are the, the the guys that are finding vulnerabilities and reporting in in, in the correct way. So it's a uh, cyber criminals, let's say. That's the 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 work. Um, also, the cost for defending companies is incredibly expensive. So not just because you need to find solutions, that's not enough. Solutions uh, per se, is, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to have, but uh, you need people, you need a team, you need the people train and the awareness. And it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not easy. And I uh, think that uh, cybersecurity is not just for the security team. Uh, we need to spread the word of security and we need to uh, talk with the developers, we need to talk with human resources, with the legal team, so that uh, everyone is aware of, of, of cybersecurity. So uh, also we have uh, infrastructure complexity. It's, uh, we went from very basic, uh, uh, very basic stuff in the, in, in the past with uh, our own uh, servers, uh, dedicated servers in, in on-premise, and, uh, and now it's uh, incredibly different. So in the last 15 years, the, the stuff has changed, completely changed. So we have the Kubernetes, we have the Docker, we have the, uh, the stuff in the, in the cloud. Uh, we have created API services, microservices as well. It's uh, and everything is uh, has its its own requirements regarding security. We need to to be aligned also with the uh, industry standards, and are not the same for everything. And uh, it's not easy to manage all that, right? And also um, something that appears in the in the newspapers and uh, in the media is like it's really difficult to find talent that you want to to hire. And well, I, I'm. 
usually saying that it's not part or it's not a problem to, to find the talent. The problem is to find the budget and pay them. So uh, yeah, well, this is a bit uh, some numbers that uh, Geogosa provides in, the, in their uh, website. But uh, we have seen a lot of the data privacy uh, breaches and not only data privacy, but also uh, exposure ransomware that have been affecting really big companies, right? So it's a, a bit scary and uh, how we can uh, be sure 100% that uh, we are secure. Well, that's not possible at all, but uh, there are many uh, things that we should be doing uh, to, well, at least to, to, to sleep well or try to sleep well. So first of all, our depend testing activities. This is quite important. Uh, you need to, to make frequent pen tests in your uh, solutions, in your servers, uh, around the company, so it's quite important. We cannot forget about compliance, right? And the standards, industry standards that we need to follow. Uh, also, we need to uh, uh, play a, a, a huge uh, paper with, uh, with internal and external audits. It's uh, probably your company, if it's not big enough, it's not required to have those, but uh, uh, why not having this extra layer of security? Secure coding, uh, it's uh, having uh, uh, specific tools to analyze the, the code, to analyze uh, uh, the applications before they are published and, maybe, and before they go to production. Uh, because anything that you will find in the development uh, phase, uh, it's easier to be fixed and instead going to production, put it in the in the website, and uh, you need to, to to tell your customers that they they need they need to update the, the solution because uh, uh, security issue has been found out. It's uh, expensive, and also the backbone the programs that we will talk uh, today is uh, with with this slide i want to emphasize that uh, it's not just about doing backbone programs we need to do a combination of things so it doesn't matter if you forget about uh, the other stuff if you focus on backbone programs your security will fail and now i will be talking about backbone programs what is the difference between this and the other stuff that I have been mentioned. Well, here you have the results guaranteed. So any finding that will be, uh, well, that it's real, uh, will be paid, only those. So you don't have to pay all the findings that will be submitted to you. So if it doesn't match with the scope, with the target, so if it's not uh, a security uh, issue uh, for you, uh, you don't need to pay for that. So it's agile and flexible, so you can switch it, switch on, switch off uh, whenever you need. Uh, we were mentioning about the talented people, right? And here, uh, it doesn't matter what technology you are using, you will have uh, tons of hackers, tons of researchers that will be happy to uh, participate in, in your program and find the stuff that, uh, yeah, that you are offering. So it's, uh, yeah, it's really nice. Uh, what about the budget? So it's complex because uh, the, the, the platforms are a bit expensive, but in case you don't want to run with a platform or whatever, you can it, uh, do it by yourself. Later on, we will explain that uh, a little bit. But if you only have uh, 10K, just use that 10K. And after that, you can close the, the program until you have more, more budget, right? And uh, the important thing is that you decide the scope and targets. If you want just to, to, to test on one solution or one website or a few of them, it's uh, just a matter of uh, explaining that in the policy. Uh, the researchers won't touch any other thing that is not in that scope. So what is the main difference between backband and responsible discussion? It's easy. So Backbounty is uh, the program where you are paying for each vulnerability to the, to the researchers. 
So valid vulnerability, of course. And the responsible disclosure is a kind of uh, what, program where uh, you agree uh, with the researcher that they can submit the vulnerability in a, a secure way. In a, yeah, so the, the, with, the, with the responsible disclosure program, there is no compensation usually, okay? But uh, the same, I will talk later about this because there are some uh, companies that are offering uh, uh, some rewards, for example, IKEA. How you start a bug bounty program? It's uh, a bit scary at the beginning, and this is something that we need to align with the C level. It's uh, it's something that uh, won't uh, give us a bad reputation. Uh, on the on the other hand, is that this is a, an, an approach to the community, to the hacker community. It's uh, well known that companies that are close to the community uh, are better in security. First thing that we need to do is uh, plan the budget. How much money we need, we we want, or we can spend, right? So not only for the bounties or the rewards, but also to create the or to acquire the platform. Uh, if you don't have uh, enough money to acquire a platform, you can use uh, a ticketing system, you can use uh, an email address. It's not the recommended stuff, right? But if you want, you can. So it's, it's not complicated. And I know what I'm talking because in the past, in the, it was in 2013 when we started in the, the, the responsible discussion in, in Nokia, uh, we were using an email and a ticketing system. It was hard, but uh, we managed that. Choose a platform, whatever you want. Uh, integrations, Slack, Jira, any other ticketing system. So there are many options that uh, will help. Uh, and this is quite important because any integration that you build here will help later on to resolve and fix the stuff. It's not just getting in, uh, reports. It's uh, about fixing the stuff, right? So think about the scope and targeted solutions. It's, uh, this is something that you need to discuss with uh, probably with IT uh, to, well, about the assets that you have. Team and team supporting. So you need to, well, create processes. You need to sit down with the different teams, agree who and what uh, team is doing what. Uh, the, 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 the roles and responsibilities is uh, pretty important here. That's security before. Uh, do you remember the previous slides where I was mentioning about the pen test, the auditory and whatever? So that's important. So you cannot go live in a, with a back bounty if you have not tested the stuff before, because you will uh, well go to bankrupt in a, in a few hours. Uh, researchers and hackers uh, are good enough to find a lot of stuff. So make sure that uh, you are running pen tests and uh, other security mitigations or, or measures before you put a program in a, in a bag one um, Establish criteria for payments beforehand because it's not the same low as uh, to, to a high, and it's not the same as query injection to a remote code execution. So you need to uh, align and define that criteria in, uh, the, in, the, in the better way. So why not uh, write in a, I don't know, a document in a, for your team where you can uh, link that, uh, well, uh, all the vulnerabilities that you want to pay uh, with, uh, with the value. Define SLAs. That's important because uh, we cannot uh, spend two weeks to answer a researcher, right? So they are they are using the free time or they are uh, investing their time to help us as a company. So we need to be quite fast answering them. We need to be quite fast fixing the stuff. Or if we are not fixing the stuff on time, fast enough to communicate with them. Also, it's important to define a good policy for your program. The best way you can do it is with the legal team. So the legal team will help you to, uh, well, 
what's to, to, to define what's allowed, what not, um, and also the implications that it will have to a researcher if they are not complying with, uh, uh, with the policy, right? And something that uh, I learned from my old times in, in Nokia was the monthly committee. This is really nice to have, is all the people that is involved with it, the daily basis, uh, uh, working on, on the responsible discussion or back monthly program, will sit once a, a month and discuss about the vulnerabilities. So these are the most important key players, right, uh, currently. So most of the big companies are already or have already a backbench program or responsible disclosure program. That's not uh, uh, something hidden. So it's uh, broadly known. And how a report should look like. So what is important thing in, in a report is like, well, we need to understand. We, we need to have a, a POC, a proof of concept. We need to understand how a researcher is finding a vulnerability, how they made it to exploit it, the browser version, the operative system if needed, and uh, maybe it's good to have also the IP address too if you want to analyze logs, right? So this is an example of, of a report. So you have the CBSS3 in, in the right. Uh, explanation how uh, it was found, uh, well, severity as well. Yeah, and now triaging. Uh, I'm running out of time, so I will try to, uh, well, be faster now. So if you don't have a CMDB, for example, to identify services and names, uh, create your own. So this blog is for this guy, or the responsible for uh, this service is this other guy. So it's easier later on because uh, the same sites or, or the same services will be impacted later on. So mm, that's for sure. Uh, check before you process because uh, not everything that you will get, it's a real vulnerability. So you need to validate those. You need to verify that it's not a duplicate, that it's uh, not informative ever, even. So do that because otherwise, if you accept a vulnerability and later on you discover that now this is not a vulnerability, the researcher will be, well, not very happy with you. Let's say like that. Um, also important, evaluate the risk and the impact for your company. So the researcher can submit something that uh, he thinks is, oh, the biggest uh, issue they have found. And probably in your cases, yeah, well, this is not important. Yeah, it's this SQL injection, right? It's important, yes, but maybe it's in a test environment that uh, you don't have any data, someone forgot about that, and it's, it's not critical for your business. So uh, if something uh, is missing, if you don't understand the POC, if you are not getting the information that the researcher is uh, explaining to you, contact them just ask them they, they they will be happy to support you and as mentioned before use the reports you get to learn about yourself it's uh, amazing how you can discover assets that you wouldn't imagine ever so fixing a mitigation so vulnerability management process or incident management process so there are two options here uh, i recommend the second one uh, why because uh, well, an incident will be fixed quite quite quicker, <laughs> let's say, than a vulnerability management. That will go to the backlog in most of the cases. But if you treat every finding as a, an incident, why? Because it's exposed to internet. Because someone found it already. So it's up to you, of course. But uh, I, I like to to or I prefer to to use the incident management process. Um, as mentioned before, finding the stakeholders. If you don't have a CMDB, create your own, but uh, you need to find a solution owner, developers, third parties, doesn't matter. Uh, implement the fix in a time manner, according to the SLAIs that you, you wrote. Uh, uh, analyze the impact and use it to prioritize. So it's not the same, let's say there's a SQL injection in a test environment that the SQL injection in a production environment. So you need to prioritize that. Uh, verify the fix. There is two options. If you have a pen test uh, team in your in your company, 
you can use them to verify the mitigation or the hotfix or, or the fix. Uh, and if you don't have that, you can contact the researcher that reported it. Communication. It's mandatory to keep a good communication with the researchers. Researchers and hackers are your friends. If you have uh, established a bug bounty program or responsible disclosure program, you need to change your mind and you need to have a very good communication with them. Inform them as much as you can, even if you cannot share details. Be polite and have patience because not all of them are super skilled hackers. There are a lot of people that are learning, but uh, that's not a bad thing because uh, they are learning quite fast. Try to harmonize the message uh, given. So it uh, doesn't matter how many people uh, is working uh, on the responsible discursure, uh, but uh, you need to have a kind of same message. And uh, I will tell you later on how we are doing that. So rewarding. Uh, every report is different, so you need to analyze individually. And that's why I mentioned it about the monthly committee. It's the best place to sit down, find a, a criteria and uh, discuss with the colleagues. It's like uh, how much we need to pay to this one, how much to this one. So, and again, focus on, on impact and not severity establish it. Uh, most of the times uh, researchers are reporting uh, more severity uh, than uh, in reality it is. And it's not because they want to, to get bigger payments or, or rewards that it also that affects, but because they don't understand your business, they don't understand your company, and they probably don't know what information is behind the server that has been reported, for example. Uh, establish internal criteria for payment. So it's good, as I say, to, to have a, a list of uh, uh, vulnerabilities linked to, to rewards. And how are we doing in IKEA? Well, we have a main site uh, that is bugs at ikea.com. Um, I, I need to, to start with saying that uh, IKEA is a mm, very complex uh, company. Uh, because we are so many teams uh, working on, on security that uh, we need to have a, a specific uh, responsible disclosure uh, team just to uh, receive, analyze the reports that we are getting, okay? Um, so when we are getting a new report uh, and that report is accepted, uh, this automatically creates uh, an incident in uh, our SOAR tool or incident tool, okay? Um, so we have built uh, playbooks to, to fix the, the vulnerability, to go through the process from the triage to the fix and the uh, resolution stuff. And at the same time, we also have a Slack channel. In the Slack channel, we will invite the people that it's required, developers, third parties, anyone that is required, to, to fix the stuff, we'll be invited to the Slack uh, channel. And together we will uh, get a fix, right? Uh, we close the, the incident, we update in, in the platform we are using the information, and in case it's higher critical, because in, in IKEA we are running a responsible discussion program, we are not running a back bounty. But despite, uh, we want to reward for higher critical. So this is the uh, typical incident that uh, we get. So in the triage, uh, the responsible discussion team will be working. So we have different tasks here that is, uh, well, assess incident, verify the responsible discussion information, invite the stakeholders to Slack chat, assign the incident. We also have an owner that uh, they, they will be the responsible to mitigate the the finding and uh, provide a fix. And uh, the responsible discussion team will continue performing a retest because uh, part of the responsible discussion team is uh, our pen testers. Um, they will close the Slack chat uh, once uh, that has been confirmed. And we will analyze the root cause or revisit the information such as uh, data privacy stuff, because if uh, the vulnerability or the incident uh, submitted 
is, uh, has a uh, data privacy staff, we need to uh, run out many other tasks that uh, to, to, to perform a proper investigation, right? So, and this is the, well, uh, the, the, the stuff that we are sharing in the, in the Slack channel. We explain to the individuals that are invited, uh, the information about the vulnerability, the POC to, to replicate that, and also uh, anyone can, can write there. Uh, and of course, those are private channels and only the people that is needed is invited to that one. One thing that I was mentioning before, it was the way to harmonize the uh, communication with the researchers, right? So mm, we are so many, uh, so many security teams around the globe that uh, we need to uh, show them that, well, or at least try to uh, have the same messages the same wording as well and um, yeah because uh, it's it's important the the researcher feels that uh, they know the guy that is behind talking with you so probably they understand that uh, well we are not the same guy but uh, we are explaining or approaching in a similar way that's why we have created a lot of uh, common responses so for the first communication, in case it's a false positive, in case a researcher requests a status. So it depends. Of course, not everything is a, a common response, right? So depending on the many uh, topics that uh, the researcher can request or, uh, or ask, uh, we need to, to manage that in a, in a proper way, in a polite way, right? So uh, a summary, because I, I don't want to, to enter uh, in, the, in the insights of, of the IKEA program, but uh, in, in a summary, what has changed in the, in the company? Well, what I have noticed in the last three years is that the increase of maturity level. We created a small or a step-by-step -step process that has been working. We have achieved a really good maturity level and uh, the number of uh, open vulnerabilities remains quite low because uh, the teams are working very hard to fix the stuff. And uh, well, that's, that's the way to do it. So the way the researchers submit information also has changed. It was Twitter, it was uh, email, uh, there was many the platform that, uh, it was an open back bounty platform where a researcher was submitting the stuff there uh, now we have bags.ikea.com. It's a single place. If someone else uh, or someone is uh, approaching us because they have found a vulnerability, they want to contact us, we need to forward them to that site. Why? Because there is a policy. There is a legal aspect there that they need to accept if they submit a vulnerability. Uh, the importance of their responsible disclosure program in cyber in cybersecurity. It has, be, and, and I'm very proud of it because it has uh, uh, it has been one of the most important programs in cybersecurity. Uh, it's a reference, and uh, it's uh, also it's uh, giving a positive impact in the in the business business organization. Uh, it's a good way to get that information, create a report, and share that with the developers. It's like look. We have found this. You need to fix this, or you need to avoid do doing this in the future. So it's uh, quite quite interesting. Uh, fixing vulnerabilities is now now much quicker. Yeah, I said it. Uh, incident versus vulnerability management. Incident wins always. Team structure. We have several teams across the globe, so it's a uh, more than thirteen more than thirteen. Uh, uh, security teams that are taking care depending on the uh, uh, on the asset that has been uh, uh, reported. Uh, metrics to continuous improvement. This is something that we cannot forget. So it's good to uh, monitor uh, how we are doing, monitor the timing that we are spending or we are uh, taking to fix uh, uh, vulnerabilities, answering the researchers, fixing the stuff. So it's, uh, and also how many critical vulnerabilities are you getting this month compared to the previous one? Probably month to month is not uh, quite important, but uh, after one year, 
it's nice to have this kind of uh, metrics and the statistics. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all. Thank you, thank you very much. If you have any question, put it in the in the chat. And uh, have a nice day. Thank you.